Well, the year was 1820 and John Walker, not far from here, started the whole journey towards the famous Johnny Walker's Red Label Whiskey. It's now the world's number one selling whiskey in the world. Uh, so Kilmarnock established that history for the Diageo company and for the company to walk away from Kilmarnock now after so long is an absolute tragedy. Um, this product is the world's number one seller and it's an international icon and it has Kilmarnock's name on it. Millions of people across the world know that and value it. But sadly Diageo seem to have lost sight of the value of roots and history and heritage as a valuable commodity in their product. It's a sad day that they decided to walk away from that history. Now, we all know that Diageo spend an awful lot of money promoting products throughout the world, and at this moment they're also promoting the Striding Man and the Formula One Championships. So the Johnny Walker icon, made in Kilmarnock in 1820, will be appearing in the Formula One Championships over the summer. Now, I would say to Diageo, Johnny Walker's Red Label is your Formula One brand. We're proud of it, and we want you to be proud of it as well. I think if Walker's left Kilmarnock, the town would suffer severely. Uh, jobs losses would be at an all-time high. Uh, there would be it would just become a ghost town basically. There's nothing left in Kilmarnock if that shuts down, and um, folk will find it severely hard. Shops will end up closing because there'll be nobody spending money, uh, and we'll, the town is bad enough as it is. So it really needs that to keep it going. I'm very disappointed. Uh, quite quite upset. It's been there for years, sort of thing. So. I think it's terrible. This has been a life-bloody time for years and it's such a shame. It affects all the people. It's a disgusting thing to happen. It's pretty sad because I cycle past a lot. And a lot of people I know work in there and when I was younger I wanted to work in there but if it closes down, like, I can't. Some members of my family work in there and I want to keep their job for them. Like taking away their history. They're going to be left with a ghost town, all these big factories shutting down, and they're not near further. The folk in Johnny Walker's is one of the main depots. I mean, I've got aunties, uncles, they all were brought up working in Johnny Walker's, and it was a committed tradition. Where's this to go now? And they, no factories, they know. I think it's dreadful news for Kilmarnock, but hopefully it's still just a proposal and it will not become a reality, but it is terrible news for this town um, and will have a terrible effect on the town itself if this business, which has been at the heart of the town since 1820, um, is ripped out of it. But it's not just about the loss of the jobs at uh, Hill Street. There are implications for people who have given a lifetime of work to Diageo at the uh, distribution centre out of Berleith and Hullford because they're going to be forcibly transferred maybe into a business with less favourable conditions of employment so we shouldn't forget them as well. There's the current workforce, people who have mortgages and families and commitments and plans and they're now going to be faced with the prospect of in a year's time or more you know, having to look for another job because very few of them I think will be able to um, transfer over to leaving for some of the additional few jobs that are being created. But much more importantly are the young people in this town who aspire to work for Johnny Walker, who thought that these 700 jobs were going to be a job market that would be open to them in the future. Um, and I think the loss for them is what we're all really all fighting for. And then of course there are all those people in Kilmarnock who just think of Kilmarnock and think of Johnny Walker's, you know, he's part of Kilmarnock as much as Kilmarnock Football Club is or, you know, as the uh, Burns Monument is, this is part of Kilmarnock's fabric and it would be a big loss to this town and very difficult to replace. I think the, the proposal by Diageo to leave Kilmarnock after 189 years is an absolute disgrace, disgraceful decision. Uh, the company seems to have lost all sense of value and worth and the history of Kilmarnock and the contribution that Kilmarnock has played to the success of the company. And they're walking away, leaving our people in this town empty-handed after 189 years. It's a shameful decision. It's pretty desperate for my constituents. Over 700 uh, workers will be directly affected and will lose their jobs as a result of Diageo's proposals. 
Um, it's a difficult enough time to try and get work in this part of Scotland or the South West Scotland. So it's an absolute disaster. Because many of the jobs, family jobs, there's husbands and wives working Johnny Walkers. And that's been a tradition over many years. So that's doubly damning for them. It's a disaster for, for many families. And they'll find it very hard to recover from this decision. I think the government should step in and try and help it out, otherwise it's just going to be a town that just disappears off the map. Uh, Kilmarnock's known for Johnny Walker, so that's what it's there for. Uh, if they lose it, then there's nothing left in Kilmarnock for people to think about. Keep the jobs in Kilmarnock, spend the money in Kilmarnock. Good luck for keeping it open and like, try your best. I'm standing with you and I hope it doesn't shut down. You're making a profit, keep it open. I just feel they should put up maybe a fight and then, I mean, you think of John the Walkers, you think of Kamarnock. So why no keep it in Kamarnock and keep the folk in the job? See the waste and folks can bring in a tune more soon than it is. I'd like to tell the, the directors that you know they should consider what's good for the community as well as what's good for their business because they might find in the long run that the financial implications and the implications for the community you know lead to the same end. You know what's good for us is good for them. I mean, I told them three things. I told them that um, I was disappointed, that actually quite angry, that we hadn't had an opportunity to make the case for Kilmarnock during the course of the review as we did ten years ago. Um, I, I suspect that the we didn't get that chance because we were successful 10 years ago in preventing them from doing just this. So, uh, but that's an argument for another day. Um, I told them that I wanted the opportunity, that the people of Kilmarnock, the workforce, um, the wider community of Kilmarnock demanded and needed the opportunity to try to dissuade them from implementing this proposal. Uh, he agreed to that. Uh, by he, I mean Paul Walsh, the Chief Executive Officer, whom I met within 24 hours of the decision. He agreed that we would have that opportunity, although their executives have been briefing the papers during this week that they are unlikely to change their mind, and I think that's an indication of the scale of the challenge that we faced. And I also told them that they owed a debt to the people of Kilmarnock and that they should be conscious of that debt. Um, people should understand that Kilmarnock is made a lot of profit for Johnny Walkers, for distillers, for Guinness, for Diageo over the years, probably counts now into billions of pounds uh, you know, in mo at modern prices. And that's a debt of honour and a debt of loyalty that they shouldn't forget. The best way to repay it, of course, is continue to employ people here in Kilmarnock. Um, but if we have to have that other discussion with them, I reminded them that we will be coming back to them to remind them that that debt needs to be honoured at some stage. I was at the gates with uh, Johnny Walker's workers when they came out just after they heard the news last Wednesday and it's one of the worst days I've ever had as a local councillor, a member of the Scottish Parliament, to see people spilling out of a factory that we've all loved for years in tears at the decision that the company had taken. And within an hour I had met Mr Donaghy, the uh, managing director of Diageo Scotland, to ask him what he was playing at with us ridiculous, crazy decision like this, absolute scandalous decision, throwing away this tradition. And really, all I got from the company that day was the company line, that it was a restructuring proposal and it was good for Diageo. But I've completely lost sight, I think, and lost touch with the ordinary people that have contributed to Diageo's success over many years. And it's an absolute scandal and we have to work very hard to change their mind to show them that Kilmarnock does have an important part to play in the success of Diageo's future.